Welcome to the Badass CEO Podcast. This is Mimi McLean. I'm a mom of five, entrepreneur, Columbia Business School grad, CPA, and angel investor. And I'm here to share with you my passion for entrepreneurship. Throughout my career, I have met many incredible people who have started businesses, disrupted industries, persevered, and turned opportunity into success. Each episode, we will discuss what it takes to become and continue to be a badass CEO, directly from the entrepreneurs who have made it happen. If you're new in your career, dreaming about starting your own business, or already an entrepreneur, the Badass CEO Podcast is for you. I want to give you the drive and tools needed to succeed in following your dreams. to the Badass CEO. This is Mimi, and today we have Sarah Robarts, the CEO and founder of an award-winning women-owned business called Valentine's Public Relations. Sarah, along with her talented team of PR professionals, have worked on numerous internationally renowned companies and corporations over the past 20 years in Los Angeles. Prior to that, she worked in a distinguished brands and talent in London, and she also started Valentine's Hotel in Palm Desert. Thank you, Sarah, so much for coming on today. I really appreciate it. I'm so excited to hear your story. Can we first dive into just like your background and how you got started? It, it's kind of interesting. So I'd love to have everyone hear about that. Yeah. And thank you so much for having me on. I'm thrilled to be on and I've listened to so many inspiring podcasts of yours. So thank you. Oh, thank you. For doing all of that. Yeah, no, I, I think there's some amazing ones. Brilliant. Anyway, so my background, it's interesting and very diverse. So I was born in Uganda, raised in Kenya. I went to boarding school in England, and then I went to university in Canada, came back to London and was working in London. And from London, I then came on a visit to Los Angeles. I was, gosh, 28 at the time, 29, and really just went back and packed my bags, quit my job and moved. So that's how I came to be here. And I have a background, I have a degree in fine art and was painting, you know, professionally in London and actually before that in Manchester because it was cheaper to live in Manchester than in London. And when I moved here, so my ex-husband and I sold our flats in London and we pooled our resources and bought the most rundown hotel in Palm Springs. So it was right at 2000 when the market was so depressed, people weren't really going to Palm Springs. And we saw that gorgeous mid-century modern architecture and there weren't sort of mid-century modern hotels. So we thought, right, we're going to do this. So we jumped in, lock, stock and barrel, did this massive refurbishment and we took a gay clothing optional sort of 70 bucks or 60 bucks a night hotel and turned it into... I mean, it really did very well. And it was sort of $400 a night and packed all the time. Tiny, 14 rooms. But it was a labor of love. Sort of gorgeous Noguchi furniture and Eames. Everything that you could pick up from in Palm Springs then. Anyway, that's a big answer. Yeah, now did you have background in hotel? Or did you kind of just go into it feet first? So it's so interesting. No, I'd never run a hotel before. I literally was like doing the bookings in my giant sketchbook, like drawing out the days, carrying around a portable phone and people were ringing and I was like drawing it and I was like, we need to get a booking system. But we learned that the hard way. So no, I did not have experience in hotels. I had luckily worked for two incredible women in London who were PR gurus really hardworking, incredible entrepreneurs. Everyone in the UK and probably here know them, Anya Heinmarch and Nicole Heinmarch. So it was the Heinmarch family. And their father was a fantastic mentor as well. But it was great to be in that environment. And I learned so much. Oh, that's great. Now, so how did you pivot from the boutique hotel to owning your own PR agency? <laughs> Out of necessity. So this is <laughs> <laughs> there's no fabulous strategic business plan, let me tell you. It's called survival. No, so we sunk everything into this hotel refurbishment and sort of got ripped off by, you know, contractors left, right and center. They, they saw us coming, you know, these newbies from London who'd never done this before. And 
So literally we opened and every penny had been spent. There wasn't a dollar left for marketing or PR or doing, and we just naively thought people will come, you know, how you do. And it's so interesting because I now see this with clients and they invest so much in the product and the company and don't have a, a marketing plan. I mean, I've lived that and done it, right? All the wrong way. So I thought, here, we've got this hotel, we've got this massive overhead, and now we're ready and open. How are we going to get people here? How are we going to fill this up? And thankfully, that is where my background in PR and having done what I did in London, I got on the phone to my girlfriends in London who were incredible at the likes of Vogue and the Times and the Daily Mail. And they were incredible. They covered the hotel, they wrote about it, they loved the story and connected me with incredible women in the press in New York and in LA. And so it began. And I was just really busy doing the PR for the hotel. And it, it really took off. We were on the cover of the LA Times, New York Times travel sections, you name it, Vogue, Condé Nast Traveler, this tiny hotel. So from that, luckily the city of Palm Springs we're like, what is going on with this little hotel getting all this international coverage? And they were great and they became friends and we talked a lot to them and we would share the press leads and the press coming in would then visit other hotels and properties. And soon I was working for the city doing PR and I loved the city. I loved the architecture and the history of the place. And so it began and people were like, oh, can you promote my book and my film or my clothing line, my hotel? And, and that's how it began. I thought, right, I'm going to start charging these people. And so it began. And I, I had, you know, two babies under, you know, straight away in Palm Springs, they're under a year apart, my two children. And it was just like, we've just got to make this work. There was never a choice. It's just... I mean, I literally have on my desk this amazing card that my mum sent me and says, proceed as if success is inevitable. And it, it's just like you don't question this is going to work. Right. You just, just go for it and just figure out how to do it. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking about it the other day. It's like running in a way, like I love long distance running. I don't set off on a run and think, well, what if I don't make the run? Who's going to pick me up? How am I going to get home? It's just like, this is my plan. I'm going on my run. It's going to take this long. And I think it like you have that faith and, you know, I'm going to go and do it and have a great run. You sort of have to take that to the, the spirit of business as well. Totally. I totally agree with you. What have you found to be the hardest part about either starting the hotel or starting the PR firm? I mean, it's such a good question. I think being an entrepreneur and also running a company, it's almost like, when do you switch off? I think that is so hard. I think you feel so, res I feel so responsible. I'm definitely a workaholic and very driven. So my thing is, how do I, how do I stop and not feel guilty? Like, how do I take time off and a holiday and not feel guilty? I don't have, you know, like my laptop was glued to me. I mean, literally the first 10 years, I didn't take a holiday. I just felt so driven and guilty taking time off. Now, I absolutely love it and I enjoy it. And it, it's a whole different, you learn to live with the fear. There is that fear of failure. What if? And it's like, well, then if I just keep working, it's that thing kind of like when you got started, like you being told to breathe, you know, it's just like, okay, I've got to pace myself. Right. And not miss the moments and just right. try. And, you know, it's like really being centered and calm and working on that is so important as much as working on, you know, on the business. My advice really, if I could start again, would be like those qualities that you need to run a company are so important to develop. Like invest more in that than the actual hours of emails. You know, it's just like if you can have those qualities that it takes to be a leader, that is the best investment I mean, amazing if you can have an MBA. I wish I did. I wish I had more of a communications background. And all of that is so helpful. But at the end of the day, I really think it's those qualities of, you know, having humility and strength and endurance and honesty and trustworthy, all those things that get you through and knowing yourself. Time off is so important. Yeah, so being able to turn it off and turn it on. But a lot of those qualities that you talk about 
I was just actually having this conversation with my 12 year old this morning. Do you learn those qualities or are you born with those qualities, right? Is that something that you really actually can't perfect until you're actually in it, you know, and acknowledge it and like you gain grit as you have adversity in your life or are you born with grit or are you born with humility or do you learn humility? Such a good question, isn't it? I mean, my kids, it's interesting. They grew up doing this thing called the Virtues Program. I grew up Baha'i. So Baha'i is really core to everything in my life. That's my faith. And they have this incredible children's program and they teach them virtues, all these virtues. And I think children really can be taught. And I think we need to try and model them as much as we can. But I think you're right. It's one of those things you learn by doing them. You can be taught all day how important it is to be trustworthy, but until you implement it, you know, it's like going for a swim. You can be taught how to swim by sitting on the sidelines, but you've got to get in that pool to practice. Exactly. Exactly. So you make it look very easy. I got to tell you like just, Hey, I launched and I had all these great customers coming. Have you had trouble finding clients or they kind of just kept coming since you started? So that is interesting. And, and I think that goes back to this thing about an attitude of gratitude. Like I remember very early on, this incredible yoga instructor said to me, his name's Adriano Sarmento, Adji. He said to me, if you practice gratitude, what you have is enough. And I'm so driven. And it's just like, I want more, 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 more of everything. You know, I've got to be fitter at this. I've got to acquire more of this. I've got to do more for my children. Go, go, go. And I was just like, okay, hang on. I've got enough clients. This is incredible. And be grateful. And you know what? When you do that, they come. It's not the chasing. You know, you don't have to chase it. Right. That's a good way to look at it. Maybe I'm getting across the wrong idea. That doesn't mean I didn't work incredibly hard at networking and bidding on RFPs, et cetera. But I think it's that balance. Exactly. No, I totally get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. So I see that you have an amazing group of women on your team. You have a lot of, you have a big team. I find when I've talked to other people and just for myself, managing people is one of the hardest part of running a company. I would love for you to talk about that. Like, do you find that hard? And then also, is there anything that you do with your team to, especially while we're in COVID and working remotely, is there anything that you do to foster team environment, even though we're all kind of remote? And, you know, like, and how do you find these great women? I mean, they are a joy that we have an incredible team of women, but, you know, like you said, it's so difficult. My greatest weakness in business is running a team. So, I get it, but it's taken me a long time to accept, Sarah, you're not good at this. So hire people who are good at it. I thought, and another misconception that I had for the first 10 years was I had to be good at everything. And you know, if you can't do it, hire the right people. And then I didn't want to hire the right people because they'd be expensive, right? Mm -hmm. I thought, no, no, I can do it. I'll just sort of pull it all together. And it's so stressful when it's not your expertise. So I really, the management thing, I mean, I have read and read and read as much as I can, you know, I really, and I keep trying to improve and learn and look at other people and how they run their companies, et cetera. But now we really have great people who run it and women who are hiring incredible people and they've created this fantastic culture. So it really is about being surrounded by the right people. But at the beginning, you know, it was me and one, then two, then three, and you know, it really was my weakness. I'm not great at managing a team. And I'm learning that with, with time and age and having the right people around. Right. Because I find that too, like when you're driven, it's kind of hard to slow down yeah. to explain and to make sure people are on the same page as you are. I don't know if this is how you are. It's definitely how I am that I'm kind of like, I'm going 10,000 miles a minute. And so like, I just assume everyone's keeping up with me and it's hard to like, wait, I didn't explain that. Shoot. I thought you could just like osmosis. You would have gotten it from what I was thinking. Yeah, that's exactly (laughs) how I thought. And you you think everyone is going to be the workaholic that you are, right? And it's disappointing. I, I used to really struggle with sort of the life work balance and people wanting to take time off and And I have now learned and love it. I'm learning from my team, you know, that it's, well, especially now during COVID, we're working from home, right? But before that, it was, you know, Fridays, they didn't come into the office. We had flexi time. We don't count holidays. I mean, if you told me this 20 years ago, I would have been, no, never. 
and we have such a different culture and I love it. I mean, that is the great thing. You can also create what you want this way, right? And attract mm -hmm. like-minded people. So during COVID and during lockdown, how to cultivate a sense of team. I mean, we talk a lot. I mean, there's very good communication. And, and this has been a test because it's fine to sit down for nice lunches and communicate or be in a nice meeting room at the office. But to be, you know, with kids learning at home and this and that and people being worried about getting sick and then still have good communication is really a test of, you know, how good these relationships are. So, I mean, I just think we have communicated well and often. The team have, I mean, I haven't been on a lot of the activities that they have, you know, they've had independent ones, which is great, you know, that I haven't been on necessarily on Zoom calls where people have had a chance to do more of a social thing. And then we have had, it's interesting. So my kids taught me this thing during lockdown called Hello Buffalo. Have you heard about it? You go around the table and we would do it every night. And it was like the best thing that's happened to me today, the worst thing that happened to me today and something I really want to share. So it might be a fun fact. It, who knows? It, sometimes it can be really deep. And we did it every night for months during lockdown. It was so interesting to hear from the kids. And so we did it a couple of times with the team. And it was just a great way, you know, like an icebreaker. Oh, that's cute. Why is it called Hello Buffalo, though? You know, I should find out. So no, I thought you'd know it's an American thing. <laughs> I've never heard that. I mean, I've heard that like high, low and that, but I've never heard it called that. Yeah, I don't. I'm interesting. I'll find out from the kids. That's great. That's great. No, it's, it's definitely great to kind of have a conversational piece either for your family or for the team, just kind of outside of work, right? To have the personal connection. So can you give any advice to anyone who's listening who happens to be starting their own company right now? for PR, either PR advice, they might not have the money right now to hire a PR agency, which tends to be a little bit on the expensive side. Is that a mistake to avoid hiring a PR person if they don't have the financial resources or is there something they can do on their own without hiring? I mean, yeah, there is a lot you can do on your own, of course. And I know that an agency retainer might be daunting, but there are independent, amazing PR execs around who are doing that working from home might just be one person or two and that might be way more affordable and this is something I really want to develop is like a how to do your own PR because there's so many principles and that really is a project for me down the line I really want to do that and do more teaching and mentoring and being able to help people you know say you are starting a little restaurant you're not going to take on a big PR retainer although I will say is the best investment, even if you can commit to, you know, a project, a shorter timeline than like an annual retainer, really, if you get the right PR, because that's how you get the word out, you know, unless you have a big advertising budget, doing it with PR is so valuable if you have something newsworthy, okay, because your PR is going to connect you and your product or whatever it is that you've created that you need to get to the consumer. They are going to connect you with the journalists who are your third party endorsement, right? And if you mm -hmm. want to reach millions of people through journalists conveying the news, that is such an important investment. I mean, I so believe in it. I mean, I have lived it and seen people's lives and businesses transformed. I mean, from when we were in the Palisades, two amazing mums sort of remortgaged their homes, came up with an incredible hemp line of clothing, the first one. And they came to us and they were like, this is it. These are our boxes of samples. We have spent everything to get this far. Now get us out there. And, you know, these case studies, how, so we took some samples to Vogue, for example. I'm trying to sort of give you really concrete examples so people can see, like, how, why should I invest in this? So we took the, the samples to Vogue. They had an incredible photo shoot with Amy Smart, who, you know, environmentalist, vegan, etc. And they had 40 distributors reach out to them. Fred Siegel, the likes of Ron Herman. I mean, amazing. Barney's. That's amazing. Yeah. So, I mean, I have seen it over and over and that, I, mean, I suppose in a way that is sort of the addiction, what you get up, that's why we do what we do. That right. transformation in people's lives, which enables them to hire more people, grow businesses. And a lot of these businesses have amazing give back 
components. If we're working for a huge corporate, it's great to be able to see that. Or if it's a non-profit, it's way more direct. We can see the instant impact. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is so rewarding. That's great. Now, how has your business changed now that it's more driven towards social media? Have you been using that more than just print and magazines? Yeah. So I think, I mean, so much of it is online, of course, as you're saying, as opposed to the ink, but you still need to reach journalists who are writing online in digital publications. But I do hear you about social media and the social media side of our business is hugely growing and goes hand in hand with much more of a traditional PR approach. Ideally, if you can have both and you've got the strategy of a PR plan, you're getting the incredible editorial that comes with the likes of the Wall Street Journal and the Financial Times, etc. So you've got that and that credibility, which is what we call earned media. And then you have your own social media, which is what we call owned media, your own. If you have those working hand in hand and you're able to use the content from the PR editorial on your social, that's huge. And, and when they feed each other, it's really rewarding. Oh, that's great. That's great. Okay, this has been amazing. Is there any other tips that you would give either to working moms from home right now with their kids home that are trying to grow a business or anybody who's thinking about starting a business? Anything that you've learned that you want to just kind of a good takeaway? Thanks. I think that thing, having the confidence to be authentic. So if you're at home and you know what, the kids are crying or whatever. I used to be so afraid that it had to be really polished and perfect. And I think people really relate to your authenticity. And it's fine to say, you know, this is the reality of life. We're all juggling this. And I think don't be afraid to convey that and be truthful with your mm -hmm. clients team everyone that I, you know I'm learning to practice and I love and it's just a nicer way to be and live and to encourage people to be like that and I would really say have grit and faith and go the distance if you're going to start your own business there are going to be days I mean I honestly felt like I had a startup for about 19 years we're in our 20th year and I used to wow. look around and I see other people and they sold after four years and you know, and I was just like, why is it taking me so long? You know, I still feel like I have a startup. This is 19 years in, you know, and now I really feel it's in a different place. And I'm so grateful. You know, I'm grateful mm -hmm. for the people that I've met along the way, the culture we've created. It is so rewarding, but just like, don't give up. You know, I really right. think just hang in there. It, it is up and down. You know, right. someone's, that, that's like the symbol of, you know, when your heart's going up and down, that's a symbol you're alive. And boy, as, you know, running a company, there are lows that are so low. You're like, I don't want to get out of bed. I can't do this. And then the highs are so high with the successes. I think just ride it out. Don't, you know, it's like a wave. Don't let it knock you down and take your breath away. Like use it to just keep going and pace yourself. Right. Just that sticking with it is so important. It will come right. Right. That is really important. So one, one other question I was thinking of while, while you were talking. So if somebody, you know, has been doing PR for a couple of years and now they're like, at what point can someone go out on their own? Or is it, is it kind of already saturated and you can't do it? Or does everyone want to try it and which ones succeed and which ones fail? And actually, you asked me about this PR earlier, and I, I didn't. I, we talked about fostering the team, but I didn't address that piece, which is this is a great time to get into PR. It really is. If you can do it, whether you're doing it at home on your own or you want to be part of a small team or a big team, I think this industry is only going to grow. It's doing well. People need communications more than ever. If you're good at it, don't worry. Don't even look at how many other people are doing it, how many independents, how many agencies. I never stop to think, do I have too many competitors? I mean, I really believe in that prosperity belief. There is enough for all of us. There is plenty. This is an abundant universe. There is plenty for all of us. And if you're going to do what you do well, there's absolutely going to be a need for you in the market. Just have faith in that. 
That's great. That's great. Thank you so much. This has been amazing. I really appreciate your time. And if anyone wants to find you, they would find you at your website, which is Valentine's Public Relations. Yes, valentinespr.com. This has been great. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining me on the Badass CEO Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review and see you next time. Thank you.